Welcome back to Code Station 33. I'm your instructor, Mr. McLaughlin. Today, we are going to dive back into the world of Arduino and introduction of programming. And we're going to look at program structure. Now, program structure is really important. It helps us design our programs, but it also helps the computer understand them. There are certain fundamental things that the program has to do and has to look like in order for the compiler, which we'll learn about later, has to uh, use to understand how the program is supposed to work. So let's take a look at some code here. First, when you open a Arduino sketch, and it's called a sketch in Arduino, <clears throat> it really just means program, you have uh, some things that are put in for you automatically and a lot of blank space. So first, the space up here at the top is left blank for creating variables, including libraries, creating definitions, and it's left blank by default. Later on, when we get more complicated programs, we'll be filling this space up with some of those things. Now, when your program first runs, it runs this section right here, the setup method, one time, only one time. So everything that you want to run one time first goes here in this space. Now these curly brackets enclose all that information into what's called the scope of the method. So in this method here, we're gonna put all of our code and you notice how I have an indented. Now, this is not required. This is something that is done to make your program more readable, to make it easier for people to understand and see what is going on in your code. It's good style, and it's something that we're gonna start practicing. As programs become more and more complicated, and we end up with all different kinds of levels of scope, where we have one thing inside of another inside of another, indenting is going to become really important to keep that all straight not just for us but for anybody who reads our code so again this code right here will run one time then we have our loop method in this loop method we'll repeat over and over and over again anything that is in this bit of code here will continuously repeat until of course the arduino is turned off um, by either unplugging it or disconnecting the power in some way. Now, by the way, you might see that here I have all these slashes in front of text. This is what's called comments. In fact, uh, Arduino won't even look at these, it'll ignore these. This is another way of making your code more readable and making it so anyone who looks at your code or even so when you go back and look at your code, you have a good understanding of what is going on in your program. I'm using it here to keep track of some information for us as we go through. So I thought it was a good example. Now, the other thing that's really important is semicolons. And as we start writing new instructions, we'll have to make sure at the end of each instruction there is a semicolon. This is critical. It is a source of errors for new programmers. It's what we call a syntax error, where it's like not spelling something right. We have to make sure we put these semicolons in at the end of each instruction. Otherwise, we're gonna get what's called a syntax error when we try to compile it. So when we try to compile and run our program, if we get a syntax error, that's gonna be one of, the, uh, one of the things we look for to try to fix. One of the other things, that happens in syntax errors is spelling errors or capitalization errors. So it's really all those syntax kinds of errors, the basics of code errors that happen when we get that syntax error. So in essence, what we're doing here is we're building good practice. You could probably get your programs to run without indenting. You could probably get your programs to run without comments. However, we are building a good stylistic practice because our programs will get more and more complicated later. Now, the other thing we can add into our programs is other functions. 
other methods that we can build in here and make our program more complicated. We'll look at those as we go further down the line. For right now, we're just gonna stick with these two methods, the void setup method, which runs one time, and the loop, which runs repeatedly over and over again. So that's it for today. I'll see you next time.